Teenagers aren't always what they seem to be. Many of us know that pretty well. Even an innocent looking kid can become the most ruthless murderer in the right or wrong situation. So was the case of Morgan Leppert, a 15 year old girl who thought she was in love. While chasing her dream of running away with her Prince Charming, things took a very dark turn. Welcome or welcome back to Twisted Minds, my name is James, and today we will be diving into the unfortunate case of a blue-eyed devil whose boyfriend convinced her to murder an elderly disabled man. Stick with us as we go down the spiral of love and betrayal. On a sunny day in 2008, Morgan Leppert and her much older boyfriend, Toby Lowry, knocked on the door of an elderly man. That elderly man was 66-year-old James Stewart, who was born without hands. When he opened the door, Stewart, was understandably confused. What were these kids doing in front of his house? Though no one knew it at the time, he would have never imagined that only 20 minutes later, they would be responsible for his death. Morgan and Toby had knocked on this man's door with one goal in mind, to steal his truck and get out of the state. They wanted to start a life together, a new life together, free from Morgan's parents and free from the people they knew. Nothing was going to stop them. Months ago, Leopard had convinced her mother to allow then 22-year-old Lowry to move into their home. She had lied that Toby Lowry was only 17, making everyone in her family have pity for who they thought was a homeless minor. It was around Christmas time that Morgan's mother had done some investigation of her own. She discovered that her daughter's boyfriend was actually a much older man. Of course, Morgan's mother did the proper thing and kicked out the predator. I mean, seriously, a 22-year-old man dating a 15-year-old girl her mother also ordered them to end the relationship, but Morgan would not have it. They continued to date behind her mother's back, and soon enough, she decided to abandon everything at home and travel across the country after Lowry convinced her to. They needed a vehicle to travel. They definitely did not have enough to buy one, so the next best option was to steal one. Toby had been scouting for weeks, and he had the perfect target in mind. However, their plan quickly went out the window as robbery turned into murder. When Stewart opened the door, Leopard began to narrate a story about how her car had broken down. Putting on her helpless teenage girl look, she asked to use Stewart's phone. James Stewart graciously complied, stepping aside to let the blonde haired teenager and her sketchy companion into his home. On the phone, Morgan Leopard made a call to her own cell phone. This would later prove to be the first of many blunders on that afternoon. The moment Morgan dropped the call, their plan was in action. They cornered the elderly man after knocking him around a little bit. When he resisted, the couple brought out two metal rods and began to beat him bloody with them. Somehow, Stuart managed to remain alive despite all of this. Next, Toby Lowry ordered Morgan to stab the man. They stabbed him several times, after which they suffocated him with a plastic bag to make sure the job was complete. After they confirmed he was dead, the couple embraced in excitement. Finally, they thought they could be together forever. That dream was not going to last long. Karma always catches up. Stuart rotted in his home for a few days before he was found. The moment his body was discovered, an investigation was opened. Police scoured the house for clues to this gruesome murder. Just when they were running out of leads, the most important one came in. The single call Morgan Leppard placed to her phone served as the connection. Her family had filed a missing persons case and suddenly the police were picking up her trail at the scene of a homicide. An Amber Alert was immediately issued by the media. The images of Toby Lowry and Leopard were all over the news. However, three days after the Amber Alert was issued, Morgan Leopard and her lover Lowry were apprehended in Texas. They were immediately charged with first degree murder and the death of 66 year old James Stewart, according to the Putnam County Sheriff. Leopard and Lowry were captured in El Paso just after 4 p.m. on Saturday after a motorist recognized them from a national news report and called 911. After the Putnam County Sheriff's Office revealed that Morgan Leopard, 15, and Toby Lowry, 22, were suspected of killing a disabled man, the teen's older brother spoke out in his sister's defense. Howard Hunt, Leopard's brother, told Channel 4 that the ordeal had been an emotional roller coaster for the family. Hunt lamented about how some of the bad news stories had been portraying her as something she's not. He passionately told the media how she did not have a violent bone in her body. He even said that she would never harm a mouse. 
My sister is young, Hunt said. She is the type to be easily manipulated. I don't think she was there when allegedly the murder took place. During an afternoon news conference, Putnam County Sheriff Dean Kelly painted a much different picture, saying Leopard acted as a decoy to get into Stewart's home after she and Lowry scouted the man's house and discovered he had hearing problems. Stewart was assaulted with two metal rods, stabbed numerous times, and strangled with a plastic bag, according to Kelly. The details of the murder were hidden from the public until investigators had the opportunity to interrogate Lowry and Leopard. Kelly praised the national news media for getting out the Amber Alert information, which resulted in the capture of two people now charged with murder. Despite the overwhelming evidence, Hunt was adamant that not only was Lowry the brains behind the whole operation, but also that his sister was a victim who was scared into playing along. He also stated that the authorities had not allowed them to speak with Leopard since her arrest in Texas. The trial was relatively fast. It was even faster for Toby Lowry, who quickly turned on the love of his life after learning he could face the death penalty. When the time came for Leopard's trial, Lowry was already serving a life sentence after pleading guilty to first degree murder. He even agreed to testify against Leopard, but neither side called on him during the four day trial. The jury of five men and one woman didn't seem to believe her childish appearance and accusations that her adult boyfriend, Toby Lowry, directed the robbery and murder of a disabled man. Leopard was 15 and a runaway from her San Mateo home at the time when Lowry was 22. Following a first degree murder decision by a jury, the Putnam County youngster faced an automatic and obligatory life sentence in prison. The self-described redneck cowgirl will be the state of Florida's youngest inmate. She was also found guilty of robbery and burglary. Because of the press attention in Putnam County, the trial was held in Bunnell. Christopher Smith, Leopard's attorney, vowed to appeal on various grounds, including the disclosure of her audio statements to police and the jury consisting of six rather than 12 members. He also told Headstorm that he intends to question whether a mandatory life sentence for a juvenile is constitutional in order to preserve that issue for appeal. Smith called no witnesses, but maintained throughout the trial that Lowry directed Leppert to examine the house before returning with him to rob Stewart, and that he never let her out of his sight during their cross-country journey. He also claimed that Leppert's immaturity and obsession with Lowry left her open to the schemes of a man who had already served time in jail for burglary. Smith believes Leppert is the finest example of why the law protects 15-year-old girls from older men. Leppard's attorney claimed at previous hearings to decide the sentencing that the teen was under the influence of her 22-year-old boyfriend and was immature and extremely submissive. She had no previous criminal record. Over and over, she apologized for running away with him, but it was too late. She was also pregnant when she went to prison, but her attorney believes she miscarried. Morgan's relationship with Lowry was sad and terrible, and he was not the man she believed she loved. But it's safe to say 15 year old girls don't understand what love is, especially if they believe that a 22 year old man has their best interest at heart. Jurors had the option to find her guilty of lesser crimes such as second or third degree murder or manslaughter. Smith stated that the prosecutors only proved third degree murder. He claimed Leppard had no intention of killing Stewart and caused no major injuries when she struck him with an aluminum curtain rod. Even if it were true, the prosecution told jurors she would still be convicted of felony first degree murder since she was a key participant in the burglary and robbery that led to Stewart's death. In reality, the prosecution argued that Leopard committed planned murder because the strategy centered around her desire to flee and she did nothing to walk away or prevent the attack. The prosecutor emphasized that Leopard persuaded her mother to let Lowry move in and share her bed when she was only 14 years old. She also dropped out of school after the eighth grade. When her mother discovered Lowry's age and record and kicked him out, Leppert fled with him. When did she ever do what she was told? France, the prosecutor wondered. He claimed her childish appearance and behavior was an act that she put on to achieve what she desired. In prior hearings, prosecutor Chris France maintained that Leppert was in charge based on observations of a homeless hitchhiker she and Lowry picked up after the murder. This hitchhiker had traveled with them for days. According to Robert Buckner, Leopard smashed Lowry during fights while Lowry was docile toward her. Both Leopard and Stewart's family sobbed 
as the verdict was read out. Stewart's family turned to thank the investigators. After court, both families denied interviews. According to Gretel Plessinger, a spokeswoman for the Florida Department of Corrections, Leppert was the youngest female inmate when she was convicted. Young women labeled youthful offenders are housed in a special dorm at Lowell Correctional Institute in Oklahoma, where they are separated from the regular population. Susanna Reed from the TV show Children Who Kill visited Morgan while she was serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. In the interview, Morgan describes how her boyfriend's connection blinded her. When asked what she would tell her 15-year-old self, Morgan replied, I wish I wasn't so naive and foolish. I wish I had paid attention. It felt like a nightmare. It was every girl's fantasy to have a boyfriend, and I was the last woman on the planet I expected him to be with. He turned out to be a monster, she said, and he took my life away from me. What stopped me from running away from him? I was scared of getting killed. So I let him do what he did because I was scared of him. I wish I was smart enough then like I am now. The interview was interspersed with old police interview tapes where teenage Morgan can be seen chuckling as she confirms her boyfriend is 22. Asked about the age gap at the time, Morgan said, he told me he was going to do whatever he had to just to be with me, but I didn't know he was going to take it that far. Her boyfriend escaped the death penalty and received the same life sentence as his 15-year-old girlfriend. Morgan was tried and convicted, but because the United States Supreme Court ruled that minors under the age of 18 cannot be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of release, she was entitled to a resentencing hearing. During the resentencing hearing, a tearful apology and years of good behavior behind bars weren't enough to change a life sentence for Morgan Amanda Leppert. Circuit Judge Patty Christensen sentenced the 23-year-old to life in prison for the killing of 66-year-old James Stewart when she was 15. Leopard admitted to regretting every single decision she made with her then-boyfriend that day. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me one day, she said, reading from a lined sheet of notebook paper, her hands shaking at times. The letter was addressed in part to the family of James Thomas Stewart, the victim who was beaten, stabbed, and suffocated in 2008 in order for Leopard and her 22-year-old partner to steal his truck and flee Florida. Stewart's relatives did not attend the hearing. Judge Christensen stated that she had no alternative but to sentence Leopard to life in prison since she truly meant to murder Stewart. Judge Christensen felt compelled to keep the sentence as it was given the nature of that case. Stewart, who was born without hands, had been dead for several days before his body was discovered. Leppert was also sentenced to 50 years in prison on convictions for burglary with assault and robbery with a deadly weapon. Christensen stated that Leppert's murder sentence will be reviewed in 25 years. She mentioned that Leppert had obtained her high school equivalency and a cosmetology certificate while incarcerated and asked her to maintain good behavior in order to be assisted with evaluation. The judge encouraged her to continue being a good citizen in prison. Being young can make some people feel invincible, but sooner or later, karma catches up. Morgan Leppard is another case in the never-ending list of teenagers who will spend the rest of their lives paying for the mistakes that they made in their early years. It is truly sad how many lives can be ruined by just one wrong decision. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of Morgan Leppard. And why don't you go ahead and click on one of the two videos on your screen for another one of our videos.